I'm here at the NRA National Farms Museum with the director of the National Farms Museum, Jim Supika. And Jim, thank you for joining us for first of a two-part installment on the Curator's Corner of Revolving Rifles. Now, Jim, this is fascinating stuff. We're setting up for this interview. You had the, the, the firearms out here looking at them, and you, you started with the one that's got our interest, Dennis and I, the most. Tell us about this type of revolving rifle here. This is a fun era area, and uh, these are kind of in our weird and wonderful collection. A lot of those guns, we say they are uh, answers to questions that nobody asks. But actually, these guns were answers to a, a very important question, and that is in the percussion era, how did you develop an effective repeating rifle? And there were a number of uh, uh, methods tried, and this one is just a, a particular favorite of mine. This is a Bennett and Haviland uh, mini-chambered rifle. Now, it's not really a revolving rifle, but it's one of the concepts that was tried to develop uh, a, a percussion rifle that would have repeat shots. This is a 12-shot rifle in an era that most rifles were single shots and had to be muzzle-loaded uh, uh, between each shot. So this, uh, uh, had it been very practical, would have been a, a heck of a development at the time. <laughs> but as you see here, it has 12 individual chambers. And these chambers uh, each held a powder charge and a lead ball. And on the bottom is a nipple to receive a uh, percussion cap. Oh, wow. And there's a wheel down here that you would turn to rotate a new chamber in front of the hammer here, it's an under hammer gun, but you cock the hammer, you would twist your wheel, and you would have a fresh charge come up. Wow. Now if this gun had actually uh, uh, worked, worked well, it would have been a heck of an advancement. <laughs> uh, as it is, it's a very rare gun that represents a very interesting phase in firearms evolution. Uh, we believe there were only about 10 of these made. Wow. So we're very, very, very happy to have one uh, here in the National Firearms Museum. This, uh, this mini-chambered, almost uh, chain-type system really didn't work out well. And Sam Colt, of course, was the guy who came up with the effective repeater, the revolver that had a rotating cylinder with uh, a cluster of uh, chambers on that uh, cylinder. And no sooner had uh, Sam Colt introduced his revolving pistol than he started producing revolving long guns, too. Uh, Colt made rifles, muskets, and shotguns in a revolving percussion uh, form. Uh, and it's just exactly, if you can picture a big uh, Colt Dragoon revolver, it's just exactly the same style. It's a, a, a six shot, uh, very large caliber chamber. Um, and it works, uh, it works just like the revolver does. You load the powder. You put in the ball, it does have a rammer here, just like the pistols do. This one operates sideways instead of down, but you use that to ram the charge home. You put a cap on each of the, uh, the nipples on the back of the cylinder, and you have six shots there just as fast as you can cock and fire. So a remarkable advancement wow. uh, uh, over, over the single shot uh, musket that was prevalent in this era. And what's amazing to look at these in series like this to see the different how guys were experimenting and trying and you're going to put a, throw a lot of stuff up against the wall exactly. that maybe not work but it's part of the process to coming to this kind of technology that we know now exactly. has worked so well and has, has served us well for hundreds of years. There are a couple problems with the revolver concept as a long gun. Now you know how when you shoot a revolver today, you'll get some sparks and flashing coming out of that uh, cylinder gap going forward. So uh, you can imagine what happens if you're holding the fore end like this and you fire, uh, fire your uh, uh, revolving rifle, you're going to catch a lot of splatter on your offhand there. The other thing that happens with percussion firearms, this doesn't happen real often, but often enough for people to be aware of it, is a chain fire. And that is when the spark will jump from one cylinder to the next and shoot off multiple cylinders, or I'm sorry, multiple chambers when you're trying to shoot just one. So you can fire this and have all six go off. Well, if your hand is out there supporting it, you can imagine, uh, you can imagine the kind of disaster that, that that would be. So you could cover some of that by wearing a, a, a leather glove, you could, the, the powder splatter. But if you have one of those chain fires, it's a real problem. Nonetheless, this was a very successful design when it first came out. 
Uh, eventually, better repeating designs were, uh, were introduced, uh, uh, probably notably the lever action was the, the next significant one to come along with the Volcanic and the Henry and ultimately the Winchester. But this was a serious development when uh, Samuel Colt introduced it. He had the idea of the multi-chambered cylinder that revolved like this. That was a good idea. Other people had other ideas. There that's are, what I want to talk about next. <laughs> there were others, there yes. There were others. <laughs> and they are interesting. This is the Porter <laughs> turret rifle. Wow. And here you have the chambers arranged like the spokes of a wheel with the chambers pointing out. This gun, uh, the hammer is cocked like that and the chamber is advanced. And then it's fired just by pulling the trigger and fires another one. Pretty neat design. You got to think though, remember those problems we talked about with the Colt? When you have a chain fire with this one, oh. one of the chambers is pointing at the middle of your forehead. So this design never really caught on and, and we can speculate the reason why. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's a fascinating design and uh, uh, a few problems aside, um, uh, a relatively well working one. Graham, a, a gentleman named Graham, took another approach to the uh, spoke of the wheel type repeater and uh, he mounted it horizontally like this instead of vertically and uh, uh, again it's spokes of the wheel the chambers are pointing out but in this case he has put a metal band here yeah, so a little protection to now. give you a little bit of protection now uh, uh, as rare as that uh, first uh, uh, Bennett and Haviland we talked about where there were only 10 known examples this is even more rare. This is the only known example of this gun. Wow. So uh, we're, very, we're very, very glad to have it in the uh, uh, National Firearms Museum collection, uh, but it, uh, it's one that certainly never caught on. It's more in the prototype uh, uh, concept. Um, but uh, uh, the, the idea of a percussion revolving rifle was certainly one that uh, was experimented with and as in the Colt concept, had a certain degree of success. In our next, uh, our next installment, I want to talk about some of the uh, cartridge revolving long guns that were developed in the next era. Excellent. Right. So one of a kind, and you can only see it here at the National Firearms Museum. Exactly Jim, tell right. us how people can see that here in person or online as well. We're open every day of the week, uh, uh, and we're open from 9.30 to 5. We stay open late on Saturdays till 7. It's right at the NRA headquarters building. Uh, on Waples Mill Road in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, and if you're here over the lunch hour, you can stop at the uh, cafeteria. If you're a shooter, you can stop at the NRA range. But it's, it's free. Uh, we're closed only on major holidays. A wonderful, wonderful museum, well over 2,000 guns on display, including a lot of weird and wonderful pieces. I love them. And we've got a, a big deal going on with our website. We're in process of doing an incredible update on it. It's nationalfirearmsmuseum.org, dot org, not dot com. And uh, um, we've, got a, we've got the phase one of it up now with a great video tour of the museum. Virtual tours of Virtual this museum. Virtual tour. You can go to yes. each gallery, click on that gallery, and our, our two senior curators will tell you about it. But what's coming in phase two, we will have every single gun in the museum available to where you can click on the uh, gallery you want to go to, click on the display case, click on any gun on that display case and pull up that gun, pull up multiple pictures, pull up a little video story about some of the more important ones and uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, literally tour the muse museum from the comfort of your home. Uh, anybody with an, an internet connection and an interest will have access to the National Firearms Museum. Jim Sapika, Director of the National Firearms Museum here at NRA, thank you very much for being with us for the Curator's Corner. Thanks, John.